No one wants to leave a child in danger. But the mother and father you're about to meet say they weren't hiding. They sought medical help and now two years later, they are still fighting to get their son back home. As the sun went down in Calhoun, the courthouse sat quiet. You guys know we have t-shirts for sale for 25 bucks. But across the street, a family got ready to make some noise. First, with a fundraiser to help pay for their upcoming legal fight. This is Brady and Carrie Timms with their newborn son, Jameson. Second, Two with a ago, social media campaign to tell their story. Our ultimate goal is to make sure um, all the state officials are aware of what's going on, from the governor uh, on down to the local, to the general assembly. So we're going to do the 50-50 raffle. Ryan Rolston leads You Are the Power in Georgia. It is a grassroots organization that empowers people to fight against what they view as government overreach. 11 Alive Investigates started researching the case against Brady and Carrie Timms last year. They have declined to talk on camera for fear their words will be used against them. They are facing charges for aggravated battery and cruelty to children. And not just any child, their newborn son. There are parents, there are guardians who abuse their children. And in that instance, DFACS does need to get involved in those cases. However, so what makes these different? These parents are factually innocent. No crime has been committed. But how do you prove that? These are, these are medically fragile children. And so we have a group of legal experts, we have a group of, of doctors um, that specialize in some of these medical conditions that these children have. It's unfortunate right now that juvenile court judges and DFACs um, ignore those medical opinions. The parents say their child was only six weeks old when they started noticing discoloration on his skin. Their pediatrician eventually recommended they visit Children's Health Care in Atlanta. The boy's grandmother remembers when the child abuse pediatrician found three fractured ribs. If they would have had abused him, do you think they would willingly drive him down there? No, because they had no clue what they were getting ready to face. It would take months before the court would allow the family to do independent testing to dispute the claims of abuse. Connie Miller says two defects workers were with the family in Boston when doctors there connected the baby's injuries to a medical condition. Defects wouldn't accept that even though they flew, two of them flew up there for the appointment with them. So even if you get a diagnosis, People don't believe it. The Tims have spent more than $50,000 trying to reunite their family. Still, because of the criminal charges, they can only see their children if supervised. Georgia is absolutely fracturing families. These situations often begin when a child abuse pediatrician is asked to consult on a case. 11 Alive reached out to Children's Health Care of Atlanta to better understand their role. The hospital declined an on-camera interview. If you believe this has happened to you or your family, reach out to Rebecca by sending an email to investigates at 11alive.com.